Hello, this video is going to show how to use the frequent item set function as part of database analytics in Oracle Analytics to compute market basket analysis. So this is a data set with order line ID, so sales details, where I have order IDs, I have customer ID, so distinct customers, and I have items, which basically is the product that each customer bought. So let's use this data set for a frequent item set analysis. So we're going to look at the numbers. We have about 9,000 rows. We have about 400 products and 2,600 customers. So we're going to analyze what are the most frequent combinations of products, so items, each customer buys. So this is frequent item sets. On the charts on the right, we can see that some customers are buying a lot of distinct products, up to 23, and some are not. And vice versa, some products are being bought a lot of time versus some products are not being bought a lot of time. So to do this frequent item set analysis, we are going to use data flows. So I'm going to create a data flow here, and I'm going to import my own data set in the data flow. That's a transaction data set. And I'm going to add it to my data flow. And then I will select a node in my data flow that is called database analytics. So my data sets is sitting in an Oracle database. And therefore, I can apply frequent item set database analytics to this data flow. Let me turn off the preview of the data. Let me collapse outputs for the moment. And here are parameters. So what are the parameters? First, the transaction ID column is basically what defines our transaction. In our case, it's the customer ID. We are analyzing baskets bought by customer. The item column is our product here. So we're selecting the item. So again, we want to identify the most frequent combination of items bought by each customer. Any combination is made up of at least two items, and we have a limit in the maximum size, and we're going to set that limit to four. The feature will go up to four anyway. We're going to leave all the other parameters to default. Just let's highlight that we are returning here only the top 50 most frequent item set. We will change this later. Outputs. So we're going to let everything default here. We will return a, all these columns in our data set, result data set, and you will see when we analyze what each of these columns mean. So let's just go and save this as a new data set, which I'm going to name specifically. So this is going to be saved in the same database as the one where the source data set is. So we need to provide a table name. Let's just make sure that we are putting the right uh, aggregations and treat as for each of these columns. So item set ID is an attribute, so is the number of items. You will see this as we look at the results. Let me now run the data flow. And as I run the data flow, this is all function shipping, so pushing the work in the database and proper analytics are being used in the database. Nothing is happening in OAC. The only thing that's happening is as the data flow completes, we can see a new data set being created in OAC with the identified most frequent combinations of items. So let me pick up a few of these columns and create a table so we see this data. So we can see a item set ID, how many items in the item set, the number of occurrences, and which items are making up that item set. So if I filter the, I'm sorry, if I sort this decreasing, I can see that the most frequent one is item set number 344, and it's a pair of these two items here, item one and item two. And I can see the occurrences for the other frequent item set. I can see here that the first one that has three combinations, the most frequent combination of three items in my data set is 571, and it is these three items right there. So let me build a quick calculation here just to count the item set. So count of item set ID, that's a custom calculation. So we can see how many item sets, how many combinations we have per size of item set. So uh, two, three, or four. So we have only twos and threes, and it sums up to 50. And if you remember, 50 is the top end limit that we set in our process. So we're only seeing the top 50 
most frequent item set. And in that top population, there happen to be only two of size three, three items, and 48 item sets of size two. So let's go ahead and, and change that parameter and set the, set the top to be higher than just 50. So I'm going to go back to the data flow that we just created. And I will click on the node here and I will simply go and upgrade this to 500, for instance. And I will not even uh, change the name of the result data set. I will override the result data set with a new run of my data flow, which completed. Now let's go and reopen the same report. Now I see that I have a way more item set. I have 346, not 500 though. And I can see that I have some combinations of four and combinations of threes and combinations of two items with different um, numbers of occurrence. So, so we've increased the top N and of course the, the, the analytics is now returning a lot more combinations, but still not 500. So why is that? So let's look at these two columns that we haven't yet brought into the table here, support percentage and total number of concessions. So if I drag this into the table, you will see that total count of transaction is our population of customers in this case, the same number across the board, 2,691. Support percentage is simply the division of number of occurrences of this item set divided by the total number of transactions. So that's basically the proportion of transactions that are made up by this combination exactly. So if I go with different number of items, you will see support percentage is changing. It's a different way to express the number of occurrences as a proportional of the total number of, of customers or transactions. And that is the reason why we don't see our top 500 uh, transactions in our result set here. If you remember in our data flow, let me go back there, we had a criteria that was a minimum support percentage. So if I go to database analytics, you will see 0.25% minimum support percent, meaning the analytics will not consider any transaction if it's not at least making up 25% of the transactions in your data set. So we can obviously change this. But as you're tuning this parameter, be very sensitive to the performance impact this is going to lead in your database. This can lead to very long queries, especially if your data set has a lot of um, different item sets. So let me set this up to 0.05% here. So our target is going to be transactions that do not even occur very frequently. And I'm running this data flow again, and let's go open the data, the report again. And hopefully I'll see more transactions this time. So here we go. We see a lot more transactions this time, about 500 exactly. We see four transactions that have a size of four items. And then we see many transactions that have a size of three. Let me color this and we can look at the details here. In all the item sets returned here, we're going to be above the 0.05% threshold we set for support percentage. So this analytics is made simple and easy by the database node analytics, which is quite complex to achieve manually otherwise. In an upcoming release of OEC, it will further be enhanced with providing uh, association rules that are related to these results. Thanks for watching this video.